Great out. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Come on, let's give him a hand clap of praise for all he's already done for us. Amen. He's been so good to us, and we thank him for all that he is doing, is going to do, and, uh, and uh, have done for us in our lives. Uh, he's been certainly good to us in spite of ourselves. Amen. 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 It's now time that we start our Sunday morning worship, and, uh, and uh, our choir is made in Ian. Our devotional reading, a responsive reading, rather, is uh, found on the inside cover of your bulletin. Give everyone just a moment to get there. Amen. Amen. Once the church has found our responsive reading, then let the church say amen. Thank you, Jesus. Please stand. And our responsive reading is found in the book of Romans this morning, Romans the 10th chapter, the 12th through the 15th verse, and it reads as follows. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? All together? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings to, of good things. Our song this morning, our congregational hymn is, What a Friend. Oh, good God Almighty. What a friend we have in Jesus.
testing. Great morning, Black Chapel. What a wonderful day it is to be in the house of the Lord. What a friend we have in Jesus. Did you know that was your friend? Friend is someone that you can call upon in times of need. You know, it's wonderful how the Lord has kept us over this past week. And not only that, over our entire lives. And did you know it was not because we were so good and we were so great. It's all because of God's grace and mercy. And we're here to worship and thank him for that. Please join me in the word of prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, Lord, we come to you with bowed heads and humble hearts, just thanking you for another day, Lord. Lord, we ask your blessings upon each and every member that's at the sound of my voice, Lord God. We ask your blessings upon Black's Chapel. Father God, bless every auxiliary in this church. Bless our members, those who are in this congregation and those who are watching online. Lord God, we ask you to forgive us of our sins, Father God, where we fall short, Lord God. And Lord God, we not only within this church, Lord God, we ask your blessings upon those outside the walls of this church, Father. The Lord, those that are in hospital rooms, Father God, we ask your blessings upon those that are behind prison walls. Father God, please touch them in a, in a special way, Lord God, and let them know that as long as they trust in you, everything's going to be all right. Father God, we ask your blessings upon our pastor, Lord God, and his family. Lord, please crown his head with wisdom and allow, Lord, continue to allow him to feed us, Lord God, that spiritual food, Lord God, that will make us better and prosperous, Father God. And Lord God, we just ask your blessings upon those that protect and serve us, Lord God, our law enforcement officers, Lord, our teachers, our firefighters, our military personnel, Lord, those that put their lives on the line to protect us, Lord God. We just ask your blessings upon them, Lord God. And not only that, Lord God, please watch over our youth, Lord God. Lord God, help them to make the right decisions, Lord. Watch over our parents, Lord God, and trust them and instill with them the guidance that's necessary to raise their children in a godly way. And Father God, we ask your blessings upon those that might be suffering from breast cancer, God. Lord God, please touch them in a special way. Lift them up, Lord God, and let them know that we care and we love them, Lord God. And, and, and you're still working miracles, Lord God. You still, you work through doctors, you work through physicians, you work through medicine, Lord God. But we must trust in and believe in you, Father God. And Lord God, and we just ask you, Lord God, that after everything has been delivered toward us, after we've been fed here today, Lord God, that when we leave this place, that we represent you, Lord God, in, in everything that we do, Lord God, because we know that, Lord God, your, your word says that we are to draw all men and women nearer to you. And we want to be examples of that in our communities, Lord God. So when we depart from this place, Lord God, allow us to walk and, and lead in that work, Lord God. And when we return home today uh, to our destinations, we ask that we find things better than when we left. And these things we ask in your darling son's name, Jesus. Amen. This concludes our devotional service. Thank you.
Amen. Oh, bless his name. Glory to his name. Amen. First Thessalonians 5 and 18 says that in everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus toward you. Look what they just said. Give thanks. Hey, let's thank him right now for allowing us to be back out in the house of prayer again. Let's thank him right now for watching over us last night while we slept in slumber. Let's thank him last night that we... Listen, I heard a, I heard a lady say to me a couple of weeks ago, she says that uh, I thank God that I, I had three bypasses. I looked at her and I said, that's amazing. She said, I know it is. She said, I passed by the hospital. She said, I passed by the cemetery. She said, I passed by sickness and health. And I thank him for three bypasses. Then I had another friend of mine tell me that uh, he said that seemed like we don't understand and see God until we and I see you. He see you. And he loves you. And we thank God for our Savior and his son, Jesus Christ. We thank him for all of you who've come out this morning to worship us, worship with us now in spirit and in truth which brings us to that portion of our service whereby we acknowledge our visitors. If you're visiting here with us for the first time, even on the World Wide Web, at this time we'd like for you to, we're going to pause and just have you to stand if you're here in the sanctuary with us. If you're visiting here with us first time and you're not on Black Chapel's Row, we want to acknowledge that God has allowed you, amen, has come out to uh, uh, worship him with us now in spirit and in truth. And we thank God for you. And we pray that uh, you'll continue to be blessed. And we love you with the love of the Lord. Come on, Black Chapel. Let's sing to him. Amen. Bless him. Amen. Wyndham. Yeah. Amen. 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 All right. Amen. 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 These are home folks. Amen. 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 Homecoming. Amen. I'd like for y'all come on back to this home right here. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. God is a good God. He got me up here for something now. Y'all know me. Listen, we're going to get ready to have our announcements from uh, Sister Miranda Love right there. And right after Miranda Love, we're going to deviate a little bit. We have a guest visiting here with us also. Uh, he's running for a chancery court judge. His name is Damon R. Stevenson. Am I right? Amen. That's him right there. And right after Veranda reads us our announcement, we're going to allow you to come up and uh, have a word with us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Just a word now. <laughs> Amen. Good, good, <clears throat> good morning, Black's Chapel. Oh. Sorry about my voice. Our announcements are as follows. Breast Cancer Awareness will be observed on October 30th, 
during regular service. The color is pink. If you would like to be recognized, please email your name and announcements to Black's Chapel at announcements at blackschapel.com. The phone number is 672-7356 or 946-3498. Our 54th church anniversary will be celebrated Sunday, November 6th at 1030. Please invite your family and friends. The person with the most visitors will receive a gift. That's on the, the 6th. All auxiliary leaders are asked to meet in the prayer room immediately after service today. Mackenzie Baptist Church in Lexington, Cynthia Johnson, Assistant Pastor's Anniversary, will be Sunday, November 13th at 2 p.m. Pastor McNeil will bring the message. The combined choirs are asked to render the music. The entire church is invited. Jackson District Missionary Baptist Association invites you to the 155th annual session, October 24th through 27th, beginning nightly at 6.30. The Youth Department Night will be on Tuesday, the 24th at 6.30. If you're interested, please see Sister Tate, and the church will pay registration. Our birthdays for the week, the 23rd through the 29th. On the 25th, we have Noah Thompson and Jamonica Awusu Ansa. On the 26th, Joshua Hanna. The 27th, Isaiah Reynolds and Joyce Williams and Linda Williams. Happy birthday, members. prayer list, we have, jo we have John Turner, that's the father of Deacon Adrian Turner, Sister jo Gwen Johnson, Reagan Ross, the granddaughter of Michael, Deacon Michael and Sister Constance Ross, the Bennett family, they're doing better, so be in continued prayer for them, Selena Luugu, sister of Pedro the Roofer, Sister Mary Cooper, mother of Dennis Williams, Deacon Charles and Sister Madeline Bell, Tyler Pfizer, nephew of Mother Wyndham and Deacon Melvin Pfizer, Brother Turner Curry, Joshua Henderson, and Sister Jessie Bell Williams, mother of Brother Curtis Watson. These are our announcements. Have a great week. Good morning. morning. Giving honor to God and to Pastor McNeil, and thank you all for just allowing me a brief, mo a brief moment to address you all. I'd also like to thank my lovely wife and two little girls uh, who are here with me on this morning. As has been stated, my name is Attorney Damon Stevenson. I'm an attorney and a municipal court judge. I'm a graduate of Tougaloo College and Mississippi College School of Law. And I know you all may have seen me a lot of Jackson State homecoming uh, events this weekend. And I tell people I went to Jackson State so much, they didn't give me a degree, but they did give me a wife. And so I appreciate it. Right, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> But, but I'm standing before you just to remind that we do have an election coming up in just a, a matter of short weeks, November 8th. As you may have heard, one of our long-term Chancery Court judges, Denise Owens, is retiring. And I currently work under her as a special master for Hines County. And I'm running because I have a sincere desire to address the needs of our community as it relates to young men. I was the first man from my family to leave and go to college as opposed to a correctional facility. My father was not able to see me graduate from high school, college, or law school because he was incarcerated. But I'm so thankful that I had a mother and a grandmother that kept me on the right path. Yeah. And 
Every time I walk in a courtroom as an attorney or as a judge and not as a defendant, I give the glory and praise to God because I know had it not been for him, there go I. And so I'm running because I would sincerely like to make sure that our children are in the best possible environment when they come up. And so I would ask you to seriously consider Damon R. Stevenson on November 8th. You can go to electdamonstevenson.com or Damon Stevenson for Judge on Facebook. Thank you and God bless you all. Amen. Good morning, Black Chapel. Good morning, Black Chapel. Amen. Amen. Y'all were loud in there in the stadium. Good morning, Black Chapel. Amen. Amen. How many of you come this morning to praise the Lord? How many of you come this morning to praise the Lord? Amen. The Bible says, let us enter his gates with thanksgiving. To his course with praise. Hey! 
Amen. 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 While the deacons are coming to receive of our tithe and offering, the word is, is that when praises go up, when praises go up, and so, and so then when praises go up, then blessings come down. Then watch this now, and watch this, watch this now, watch this now, watch this, watch this. He that have an ear to hear is going to be blessed here today. He that have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church through the message that God has already given the pastor, you're going to be blessed today. Come on, Deacon. It's offering time. Black's Chapel. Let's continue to praise, thank the Lord, and bless. And at this portion of our service, we can continue to bless the Lord through giving to his ministry so that his will might be carried out in this community. Uh, here at Black's Chapel, we have multiple ways to give. You can give online through Givelify. You can come through any day of the church and drop off money in the drop box on the west end of the church, or you can give right here in service. At this time, we're going to turn everything over to our ushers. Let's go to God in prayer, a prayer of thanksgiving. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Oh God, we just pause one more time to give you thanks. 
thanking you right now for this offering we just received now. We pray that it be used in the purpose with which you has intended it to be used, O oh God. We pray right now for everyone that is here under the sound of my voice, O oh God. We pray that you continue to bless them and keep them now. We pray, O oh Lord, that they would be hearers and doers of your word, O oh God. We ask you now in the mighty precious name of Jesus that you would continue to watch over our pastor and his family. Watch over all of us as we move forward, oh God. You've been mighty good to us and we've been thanking you and we thank you right now. You've been very, very, very kind to us. You've been patient with us. You've been long-suffering with us. And we thank you for being long-suffering with us. We thank you for waiting on us. And Lord, we just lift up you right now. We lift you up. In the mighty precious name of Jesus, we pray now and do give thanks. Amen. All things. All things come of thee. And of thine own have we given Amen. Amen. Oh, 
is the name of Jesus. So precious until all of us who are gathered here this morning 
and in places like this all over the world. His name is so precious until we all came out to praise his name. To clap our hands, to stomp our feet, to lift holy hands, and to shout out hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. To render up unto our God our highest praise. That is the reason for our being here. Not just in this sanctuary. Yes. But rather in the world of created life. That was the ultimate purpose in which our God made and created us. He made and he created us as instruments of praise. And if you missed that note, Amen. Amen. you missed the boat. You are a dead fish in the water. Amen. What the series that comes on AMC, The Walking Dead. The Walking Dead. Because it is because of him that we live, move, and have our very being. We are because he said, let us be. And God can become silent. Any morning, noon, evening, or night he choose to. And any of the time in between, God can stop saying, let it be. And life will discontinue. Doesn't matter how healthy we are, how strong, no matter how many reasons we may have to live. None of that is reason enough to live. The only reason why we are alive, it is because of God's goodness, his mercy, and his amazing grace. That unmerited favor that he rained down upon us in every breath that we take and in every beat of our heart, sin, mercy, grace, unconditional love. Let us give the Lord a round of applause just for our very being here. There's nothing wrong with this place that we're in, in planet Earth. But there's a whole lot going wrong with us. The us factor is what defiles this place. This garden of Eden that our God has planted each and every one of us in. This great choir of ours once again has blessed our heart through song. Amen. I've made that joyful noise unto the Lord. They are indeed serving the Lord with gladness and coming before his presence with singing. God has allowed each of us to be a witness and a recipient to the fruit of their labor. We are blessed, better than blessed, just because we are his. 
by way of new birth. You're blessed just to be here. Yes, you are. Just to be a sinner still walking and living in your city. You're blessed just to be here. But when you have undergone that new birth, you're better than blessed. You are God's by way of new birth. Reborn into that image and into that likeness of him. Didn't have to do it. But because he is a long-suffering God, he put up with us. And he waited each of us out until we came to ourselves and realized that I don't, we don't have to live out here in this pig pen. I have a father who cares. And I believe, I know, that I'm going to get out of this mud out of this slime, yes. out of this grind, and go back home. Amen. From which I came. Oh, how blessed we truly are to serve a long suffering God. But let it be known that there will come a day, an hour, and a time. When even God will look upon his created being and say, go away, for I know you not. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Galatians. <clears throat> the sixth chapter. And the ninth verse. The book of Galatians, the sixth chapter, and the ninth verse. And it reads as following. And let us not be weary. In well doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Amen. Meaning that there is a possibility. that one can journey through one's entire life living a weary life and die a weary death. And our God has placed that end in each of our hands. It is up to us. What our present and our future hold for us. Let us not be weary in well-doing 
For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. Let us not be weary. Let us think on this thought. Our rock in a weary land. I want to talk about our rock in a weary land. What a rock indeed he is. Just to be able to grant us a choice To grant us to be able to grant us a choice, the time, and the opportunity to choose what a rock indeed he is. just to have been able to grant us those things. An opportunity to choose the time We always walking around talking about if I had a chance, okay. if I had the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Every day of our lives, God blesses us with chance and opportunity to conform into whatever God wills us to be. Our rock in a weary land. In this weary world that we live in, the good as well as the evil have their share of tribulations. In this weary world that we live in, fire burns the saints as well as the sinners. In this weary world that we live in, Storms, sickness, poverty, and failure have no favorites. And in this weary world that we live in, Christian suffers more from the hands of other Christians or from those who have left the faith than from any other source. And the life and the livelihood of the Apostle Paul was a testament of that truth. Yes. 
the life and the livelihood of the Apostle Paul was a testament of that truth. Paul, one of God's first generation of apostles, spent many nights incarcerated behind prison bars. On many occasions, he was whipped and beaten until his back was soaking wet with his own blood. And Paul was given a thorn in his flesh. A messenger from Satan sent out to buffer him. And Paul was shipwrecked. A day and a night he spent in the deep. He was chased by a dog and bitten by a snake. But at the end of every one of the Apostle Paul's days, Paul's testimony was, I'm going to press on. I am going to press on toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God through Christ Jesus. And I'm not going to allow no one, not anything to turn me. No matter what I've gone through, not what I'm going through, I am not going to allow anyone, not anything to turn me. Too often. We allow some of anybody, some of anything to turn us around from going God's way. Paul said, I'm going to press on toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God through Christ Jesus. And I'm not going to allow anybody nor anything to turn me around. Sometimes, even the most committed, sometimes even the most dedicated, sometimes some of the most elite, and sometimes some of the most faithful can become weary in well-doing. Can become weary in just coming to church on Sunday morning. Can become, can become weary in just giving of your tithes and your offering. Can become weary in loving your enemy. Weary in praying for those who curse you. Weary in doing good toward those who despitefully use you, persecute you, and say all manner of evil things against you falsely. Weary to the degree where you feel like waving the white rag. To the degree where you feel like throwing in the towel. To the degree until you feel like surrendering the fight. But Jesus. And I wonder this morning, Black Chapel, do we have any witnesses in this house this morning? Do we have any witnesses who have visited that place before? Visited that place before? That state of being where you felt like waving the white rag. You felt like throwing in the towel. You felt like surrendering the fight. But Jesus. That King Jesus that Paul spoke of in 1 Timothy 6 and 15 when Paul stated that he's Lord of Lord and King of King. But Jesus wouldn't let you go. Held on to you. You see, this King Jesus that we serve is not like that King that Humpty Dumpty served. Oh, you remember Humpty Dumpty, don't you? You remember how 
Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall and Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. And all of his king's horses and all of his king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty back together again. But this Jesus that we serve, this King Jesus that we serve, with Jesus, it doesn't matter how many times you may have fallen. With Jesus, it doesn't matter how far you've fallen. With King Jesus, it doesn't matter how many times or how many pieces you've been broken up into. He can pick you back up, stick you back up, and put you back together again. Oh, I know we have some witnesses in this house this morning. I know we have some in whom he has picked up, stitched up, and put back together again. No matter how many times you fail, he picked you back up, stitched you back up, and put you back together again. I know we have some witnesses. You don't have to clap your hands. You don't have to stomp your feet. You don't have to lift hold your hands. You don't have to shout hallelujah. Glory hallelujah. But I know you're out there because all of us, everyone who accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, represents one of God's pick up, fix up us. I don't care how saved you are now, how holy you are now, how righteous you are now, you still represent one of God's pickup fix up. Let me tell you a little something about a pickup fix up. It's like unto when you go down to the junkyard and you purchase that old jalopy. You know, you hook a chain to it and you drag it home with you. And when you get it home, the first thing you do is you take the chain off it. And once you take the chain off it, you go to work on it. You take off an old part over here and put on a new part over there. You take off an old part over there and put on a new part over here. And when you finally get it running, you realize that that joker still has some flaws. And it still has some defects. Oh, oh, it may smoke a little. It may drink a little oil. It may run hot occasionally. And sometimes it may even stop along the way. But you know what? What? You keep right on putting up with it. You keep right on toiling with it. You keep right on taking off an old part over here and putting on a new part over there. Taking off an old part over there and putting on a new part over here. Same way with our God. When our God got ready to purchase us, he went down to the devil's junkyard and he bought us with the precious blood of Jesus. And the first thing he did, he took off the chains of the wages of our sin. And then he brought us back home with us. And then he went to work on us. He took off an old part over here and put on a new part over there. Took off an old part over there and put on a new part over here. And when he finally got us running in the right direction, he realized that we still have some flaws. We still have some defects. Some of us may smoke a little. Those left-handed cigarettes. Some of us may drink a little oil. That crown war. And some of us may run hot occasionally. Some of us may still raise a little hell. And some of us may quit along the way. We have our hats and backstabbers. But Jesus but Jesus, he keep right on working on us. He keep right on tolerating us. He keep right on picking us up, stitching us up, and putting us back together again. Aren't you glad this morning that God didn't take you down to the can man and have you crushed? Aren't you glad this morning that God didn't take you back to the dealership and he trade you in on a new model? Aren't you glad this morning that he kept on picking you up, stitching you up, and putting it back together again. That's what Paul meant when Paul stated that if any man be in Christ Jesus, he's a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. He acquired a new walk, a new talk, a new personality, a new behavior, and a new attitude. But let me tell you something, Black Shepherd. No matter how many overhaul jobs God has put on you, no matter how many new parts he put on you, no matter how much remodeling work he did on you, no matter how much new stuff God put on you God still God 
God still has some new stuff with your name on it. God still has some new stuff with your name on it. He has some new blessings with your name on it. He has some few praise with your name on it. He has some new mercy with your name on it. He has some new anointing with your name on it. With your name on it. That's what Paul meant. When Paul said, eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, neither have heard it into the heart of man. All the blessings that God has stored up for those who love him. For those who love him. If you keep on loving God, you're going to reap if you faint not. Don't become weary in well-doing. In due season, if you keep on loving God, in due season, you got to reap if you faint not. Some of you may wonder, where this due season? Due season is when God looked down upon you and see you while you're in the midst of your storm, to see you while you're in the midst of your trial, and see you while in the midst of your tribulation, and realize that need was not the driving force that enforced you to call on the name of God, but it was your faith in your God that influenced you to call on the name of the Lord. Due season is when God looked down upon you and see you in the midst of a shipwreck, see you in the midst of jail, see you in the midst of being stoned, see you in the midst of a thorn in your flesh, but you're still, you're still true to your spiritual conviction. You refuse, you refuse to let go of your spiritual conviction because you know Jesus is a rock in a weary land. He's an angel that's going to hold. He's a truth that cannot be broken. He's a rock that cannot be moved. And you have invested, all of you, you bowed into him. You tied into him. You sold out to him. And when you sell out to God, you receive in exchange for yourself some unconditional love. You receive in exchange for yourself some amazing grace. You receive in exchange for yourself a peace that surpasses all understanding. I come by here this morning to let you know that Jesus still has some soul out tickets left. Soul out tickets left. Are you ready to sell out to God? Ready to give yourself surrender to God? Give it all up to God. Because this God that we serve didn't bring you this far to leave you. This God that we serve is not a piece of the way God. He's not going to get you out on the battlefield and leave you there. He's not going to get you out of the midst of your enemy, enemy all around you and leave you there. But this God that we serve, you're 360 degrees in circumference. He's all around us all of the time. That's what David meant when David stated, Whether can I go from his spirit? Whether can I flee from his presence? If I ascend up to heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, thou art there. If I take wings of the early morning and fly off to the uttermost parts of the sea, even there, his eyes are there that hold me, and his right hand is there to guide me. Let me say, Black Shepherd, you have made a wise investment when you invest in God. When you sell out to God, God still has some sold out tickets left. It is selling out time. It is time to buy into God. It is time to turn it all over to the Lord. Take it all to the altar and leave it there. And continue to stay in love with the Lord. Be thou not weary and well doing. For in due season, in God's time, you're going to reap if you faint not. The door of the church is open. By way of letter, Christian experience, our candidate for baptism, the door of the church is open. What an awesome, what an amazing God we serve. A God at this very moment who stands ready, willing, and able to receive you into himself and to incorporate you into the body of Christ. As a born again baptized believer, the door of the church is open. By way of letter, Christian experience, or candidate for baptism, the door of the church is open. If you're here this morning, will you come? The day you hear my voice, harden not thy heart. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man, woman, or child, hear my voice and open up the door, I will come in and sup with him. The Lord is knocking. Can you hear him knocking? Saying, come unto me, all ye that labor, and I hear the lady, and I'll give you rest. 
Rest from the disturbance of your normal condition. Rest from the violent assaults upon your fortified place. Rest from the unwanted, unexpected, and undesiring happenings which are constantly taking place in your life. Rest. You have a God in waiting. You have a Savior in waiting. That all you have to do is speak the word over your circumstances. Speak the word over your situation. Speak the word over your condition. Speak the word over your storm and say, peace, be still. And a great calm will overshadow your circumstance, your situation, and your condition. God is just one spoken word. You are just one spoken word from God. Just one from being healed, from being delivered, from being made whole again. And you would be a witness that the peace of God surpasses all understanding. May not ever understand it. I've gone through this and I've gone through that. I've tried this and I've tried that and nothing worked and out of the blue. You're right. Down from the blue. It happened. One spoken word lies between you and victory. One spoken word lies between you and deliverance. Between you and being made whole and complete again. No matter how many pieces you've broken up into. No matter how many times you've fallen. No matter how far you've fallen from. One spoken word from the Lord. Peace. 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 And a great calm will come over you. And when he finishes it off and says, be still. Deliverance, healing will come. But first the peace and then the healing and then the deliverance. Because you will know from the peace alone that you are in the presence of the almighty God and that you are in agreement with him and he is in agreement with you. And where there are two three gather together in his name, touching and agreeing he will be in the midst and when God is in the midst strange and unusual happenings takes place in the midst of your situation the door of the church is open by way of letter, Christian experience or canon of baptism, I say unto our virtual audience, the same invitation that's extended unto our second audience it's also extended unto you. If something has been said or something has been done throughout the activity of our worship service that has brought you into full circle with God, has brought you online with God, and he spoke that word in your spirit, no one heard it but you, no one know about it but you. But it is going to work the work in your life while it is daylight. Let him shine. Something may have been said or something may have been done that, that, that has enlightened, encouraged, and influenced you to say yes unto the Lord. First, in order to, first to accept him as Lord and Savior, if you hadn't already. And secondly, is to come on board. Because our God is not a deadbeat father. He has a laid up provisions for all of his children. God has a roof to go over your head. Not the one that's in your physical house that you're living in. But in this spiritual house, God has a place set aside. God doesn't believe in wandering sheep, sheep that has disattached itself from the fold. He has room for you in his house. Something been said or something has been done that will assist you in coming into full circle of God in order to say yes, then all you have to do is just key in our comment section, the inbox, your name, your telephone number, and the word virtual memo, and I will personally contact you. And we will process the situation. The door of the church is open. By way of letter, preaching experience, or can I from baptism.
the door of the church is open. What a God. What an awesome, mighty God we serve. God bless you. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. As I say earlier, just for a lot in us, choice, times, and opportunity to do ourselves his way. His way. I can't begin to explain nor express how important and how powerful choice alone is. The power to choose. We're getting ready to go, but one little enlightenment. When we read John 3 and 16 about for God so loved the world until he gave his only begotten son. Some of you may say, well, I've lost three or four children. Regardless of what number you may have lost, you did not have the choice to choose. If you had the choice to choose, they would still be with you. But God took that burden off of you. That's how powerful choice is. You would have choose not to. But it took an almighty God to choose to when he didn't have to. It's only one. Didn't have but one. And he chose to give him up for a world of heathens. Undeserving. Filthy rags. He chose. By way of free will. And now he has granted us the power of choice, time and opportunity to choose. Yea or nay. May the Lord continue to bless you and forever keep you. Let us not forget our announcement that all our auxiliary heads are expecting to meet us in the prayer room immediately following service. And also, uh, let us not forget our Mississippi Mass Choir live recording session Amen. that's going to take place this coming Friday Amen. at a little more enthusiastic. Amen. If you didn't get a ticket, make sure you purchase one of the recordings. Amen. Amen. Yeah. It's nothing like being there, but God has blessed us with opportunities to substitute. Yeah. You can't be there with them, but you can bring them home with you. Amen. Amen. So let us support our very own by purchasing the uh, musical software whenever it hits the market. Amen. 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 If that's not, we're so blessed to have. Oh, thick pen brothers. Stand up over there. Homegrown. It's always a blessing to have our children to return back home. Yes, we love you all and we thank God for you all and for the great work that you're done, doing, and going to continue to do with every breath and heartbeat that God blesses who you with. You serve and you're serving him well. And we're proud of you. Keep up the great work, both of you. Amen. We're Amen. so grateful to have all of our visitors sharing with us this morning. 
Attorney Stevenson and your family. We're going to keep you and your family lifted up in our prayers, and we're going to believe and trust God. But it's, that his end will come because his end is always the best end. We cannot add to God's end, nor take away because his end is going to come. And we pray and we believe and we're going to trust God that you have favor with him for, his, for the lot to fall upon you and your family. God bless you, all of our visitors. What a blessing it's been to have you here worshiping with us as we worship and praise our God. If there's nothing more. Pastor, yes, sir. We have uh, eggs in the back lot here. I think 60 bears are for us. You need some, come by. Amen. Mm -hmm. it's, in the, uh, it's in the regular place? Well, where, regular place, right, right. Okay, where well, you always pick some up here. Amen. Amen. If you see some water down there, you need some water, grab some water. Amen. Mm -hmm. God bless you. God bless you. If there's nothing more. Let us all please stand for our closing song and benediction. Until we meet again, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide from henceforth and forevermore. Let us all say together. God bless you. God bless you. You are dismissed. God bless you.